Hi, this is Maria Andrea. Welcome to Books and Bocadillos. Today I'm going to do the newbie tag. So I have my notes here. Um, question number one, and I think these questions might not be in the right order, but I will do my best. My question number one, as I've written it down, is why did you start this channel? Um, I started this channel because I watch a lot of booktube and I enjoy watching a lot of booktube. I enjoy um, listening to what others are reading. I don't have a lot of bookish friends in real life. I have some, but I don't have on the regular conversations with in real life friends about what I'm reading. Um, and because I don't have that community in real life, I thought it would be a good idea to connect with others. Um, so I, I watch BookTube and I hear conversations that are happening on BookTube. I hear um, tags or just things that are floating around the YouTube, the BookTube um, multiverse. And I think, oh, you know, that's interesting. Or I like what so-and-so is saying about what they read or, um, and maybe I want to contribute or connect or share my own thoughts um, and experiences with books. So this is why I joined. And it got to the point where I was feeling very shy and didn't want to share my reading online, but ideas just kept coming up and I kept thinking about what I was reading and how I wanted to share. And that those thoughts and those ideas, that creative, um, creative like energy <laughs> never stopped. So I thought, you know what, I might as well just channel this creativity and this um, this wanting to connect and here we are. Next question is, what are some fun and unique things you can bring to BookTube? Um, so my channel name is Books and Bocadillos because not just for the alliteration of it all, but I am a foodie, I'm vegan, and I uh, really love um, connecting my reading experience holistically. Like I'm the kind of reader that will make um, playlists for my books. Um, if a book inspires me to cook a certain thing or there's recipes in the book, I definitely like to do that. Um, I like to pair my, my, my books with like a tea or a snack or um, that's like themed or like my dream book club would be um, centered around food. <laughs> so like we've had a couple um, in my real life book clubs where maybe we, we have a theme and we make food, like a potluck around that. Um, from that book. So I love that. Um, I, I have that to contribute. Um, I also watch both uh, BookTube in Espanol and BookTube in English. And um, I read both languages. I read in Spanish and I read in English. Um, so I sometimes read in both um, just depends on the book and the experience. And so I, I really um, feel like like cross-cultural, cross-language, bi bi bilingual in my reading. Um, so I have that to share and I could probably um, wade in both directions in terms of community. Um, but I live in the United States, so I, I speak Spanish. Um, at home and in my work, I live on the border. So I do a lot of Spanish. I deal with a lot of Spanish speaking clients. Um, my, Spanish is my first language and um, English is my second acquired language. Um, but in terms of day to day social community friendships, um, that happens mostly in English uh, with family. It's with my mom, particularly. It's all Spanish. Um, so I, I guess I have that as well to bring where maybe talking about bilingual reading or talking about um, a lot of, like Latin American authors and books 
Um, that's something that I'm really interested in. I feel like because I grew up in the States and my education was in the States, I'm pretty well read in terms of like American classics and American modern classics and or English language um, classics, a lot of like um, British um, authors and classics, but I'm not as well read in Latin American uh, literature. So I enjoy watching the Spanish book too because I get a lot of ideas about um, what I could be reading, what I might enjoy reading. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have that to share and I'm really interested in, in reading more Latin American. Um, I feel like most of my reading is um, Western English dominant and I like to I like to connect more with like Latin American culture, um, which is my culture, but I feel like in school, we didn't really read those books. So I have a lot of catching up to do. Um, what are you most excited about this new channel? Um, I am most excited about connecting with others. I'm most excited about um, building relationships and community and friendships with other booktubers, other content creators. Um, that's what I'm most excited about. I'm, I'm here to share my reading and connect and find kindred spirits, find um, others who have di want to dialogue about books we're reading. So yeah, that's why I'm here. What won't you be doing on booktube? Um, I probably won't be doing in-depth book reviews. I don't watch a lot of book reviews. The only times I watch book reviews is when I've read a book and I really want to talk about it and I have no one to talk about it with. So I'll search the book, the title of the book and um, find people who are talking about it. And so I do appreciate in-depth book reviews. I read book reviews like from um, New York Times, Book Riot, um, just The Atlantic, um, you know, literary magazines. But I I also watch uh, book reviews on BookTube. Um, I really appreciate the art of a book review and I don't feel like I could do a book justice. Um, if and when I feel like I could, I may um, be able to deliver on that. But as of right now, I don't see myself um, really spending a lot of time with really in-depth book reviews. I might do short and sweet book reviews, um, especially about books I, I really loved. Um, I don't want to say I'm never going to talk about books I didn't enjoy um, because I do find that there's value in that. I've watched booktube videos where people talk about books that weren't for them. And I find a book that I actually really loved. Um, for example, some people might say, oh, this book wasn't for me. There was no plot. Oh, I love a book that doesn't have a plot. I love a book that spends um, its time like building a world or a character. Um, so I listened to why a person didn't like it. And then sometimes what might not work for one person might work for me. And I really enjoy that. So I do find value in talking about a book that didn't work out and why it didn't work out. And maybe that would be that be then a reason for someone else to pick it up. So I'm not totally against talking about books. I books that weren't for me, but I guess I just, in terms of reviewing, I probably would lean more towards positive book reviews and not so positive book reviews. Um, why do you love reading? I love reading because it's something I've always done. Um, from the time I was a very small child, um, my parents would read to me. Um, I have memories of my mom reading to me. I have memories of my dad um, taking me to bookstores and libraries, um, writing short stories together. Uh, my dad was a writer and I, love writing as well. Um, so he really would 
inspire me to be creative, be a creative writer. And um, stories have always been a part of my my life. And so um, I love I love to read because I love dis the discovery of a story. Um, I love discovering stories, characters, worlds. Um, so yeah, discovery is a big part of why I love to read. Um, what book or series got you into reading? Um, book, so many. Um, from being a young, young girl, I remember that my parents got me this series of books. It wasn't like a series in terms of the books went together, but it was more like a set. And it was like a tiny book of fan fantasy stories, fantastical stories, a tiny book of um, like different things. Like one was like how to like how to do things, how to like arts and crafts things. Um, there were different types, like maybe different genres of stories or chapters. Um, and there was this one that was about fantastical things. Um, as I still can see those characters, a man who lived in a bubble and floated away and a girl who um, was part of a circus and like it was a tightrope, like walking a tightrope and things turned fantastical and magical. I love that. Um, I My dad uh, was really into short stories. So I remember him reading a book to me about climate change, like a short a book, a collection of short stories. And one of them was about climate change that really um, opened up my mind and got me really interested in climate fiction. Um, that was back in the 80s and 90s. So I, I'm really, in, really keen on discovering like more climate fiction. Um, as a as a kid growing up, that was in Mexico. As a kid growing up in the United States, I would say Nancy Drew uh, was a big influence. I also really loved um, Lois Duncan. Um, I remember a lot of like Babysitters Club and Sweet Valley High and. What else? Uh, Choose Your Own Adventure. I loved Choose Your Own Adventure book. Um, so those were the books that got me into reading. There was this one book that was like a treasure to me because it was one of those books that was totally underrated and I loved it. And I couldn't wait to tell people about it. And that was um, I, Juan de Pareja. I'm like blanking out on the author. But I, Juan de Pareja won a Newbery Award and I picked it up as a middle schooler, I want to say middle school, and I read it and I loved it. Or was it fifth grade? I don't know. Um, but anyway, it was one of those books that nobody checked out of the library and I checked it out of the library and I loved it, loved it. And I couldn't stop talking about it. And I wanted everybody to read this book. Um, so that was one of those books that I'm like, yay, that's like the joy of reading when you discover something and you get to like tell people how wonderful it is and you want everybody to read it so you can talk about it and have a shared experience. So those are books that got me into reading. Um, what questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? Um, what's your favorite snack? Do you... Um, have any reading rituals? Do you play music? What kind of music do you like to listen to while you read? Um, is there a favorite drink that you like to you like to drink? Um, yeah, talk to me about snacks and and drinks and um, all things that are, are like bookish connected and foodie connected um what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome my goodness i started this booktube channel in february i haven't posted in a really long time and sorry i'm being squirmy <laughs> um i haven't posted in a really long time because the editing is really hard and i feel like 
I have such a steep learning curve. Um, I've filmed videos in since between February and September. I have filmed videos for one reason or another, or another, I've had trouble editing and posting them. And so it's frustrating because you spend time talking to this camera and wanting to have, you know, you have ideas you want to share, you have tags you want to do. And then when you go to editing and you can't, you lose your material, you didn't have the audio for whatever reason, everything and anything that has, that can happen has happened um, in my booktube experience with editing and recording videos. So it got to a point in the spring where I was like, you know what, the reason why, like the real joy of it all is the reading and the books. So the recording and the posting and being social on social media with books, that's secondary, but I didn't want to lose the joy of reading. And so I just kind of spent the last several months just really focused on reading and um, trying to participate in buddy reads and and like read alongs and things like that themed um, weeks and months, but maybe doing that on my own um, or not prioritizing recording as much. So I want to be posting consistently. I hope I can overcome this learning curve, but I, I know it's going to take time. So I appreciate you watching and I appreciate those of you that are here and that watch my videos. Um, thank you for, for understanding and for um, coming along on this booktube journey with me. When did you start reading? Um, since I was a child, um, I've been reading all my life. Um, granted, my reading has gone in like waves where like as a kid, I read a lot. Um, and then um, in college, I probably read more academically, less for pleasure in graduate school, same. Um, and then, you know, as an adult post um, graduate school, I've um, come back to finding my way to reading for pleasure. And in the last maybe 10 years, I've been really trying to connect with my, my, um, my younger self. As a child, I loved fantasy and horror. Um, and I hope to, lately, I feel like I've been trying to reconnect with um, those, those genres. Oh, where do you read? Everywhere. I read in my bedroom. I read um, all over, like everywhere in my house. Um, I always have a book with me. And when I, there's this restaurant I like to go to on Fridays. Um, and sometimes I go a couple of times a day, a couple of times a week, not a day, um, to this one restaurant during my lunch breaks. And the sh they know me, the owners know me, and the chef comes out and always asks, what are you reading today? Um, it's funny, the other day I had my Kindle and it was like tucked away. I had been reading it and then my food arrived and I kind of put it away, put it to the side. And so he didn't see it. So he comes out and he's like, this is the first time I see you without a book. <laughs> I was like, no, it's right here. I have my Kindle today. So... Um, he just likes to like banter with me and ask me what I'm reading. So um, I'm always, I always have a book near or on hand. What kind of books do you like to read? I like to read everything. Um, I read mostly lit fiction, lit fic or nonfiction. Um, I love nonfiction. Lately, like I said, I've been kind of trying to go into genres that I used to enjoy as a child and um, trying to find my way into them as an adult. And um, what does your book collection look like? It's varied, it's all over the place, I have books all over my house. Every like nook and cranny and shelf has books. My kitchen has books, my uh, little like breakfast nook has books. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very varied. 
it's um, all over my house. <laughs> I wish I could had like a library where I could just contain every, all of the books. Um, but someday maybe. I think those are all the questions. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions for me, drop them in the comments. I'd love to continue to chat and share um, more about this bookish life. Um, gracias por estar aquí. Hasta la próxima.